Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, my name is Muhammad Arif Aziz. Today we are going to talk about our lecture number five, uh, strain. Before uh, proceeding to uh, strain, we have to have the firm knowledge about the deformation. Deformation is a change in shape and size of a body subjected either to a force or a temperature change. In general sense, the deformation of a body will not be uniform throughout its body. The deformation of the body can be caused by anything which, uh, it, which is due to the uh, subjected load as well as temperature. So there are a few examples. Suppose when we apply the load on the body, it uh, change the temperature. And we will talk about the steel bar. Suppose if we have a temperature uh, of uh, like when we ra raise the temperature in the steel bar, the, the steel bar will change the shape. So the deformation of the body either by the application of the force or by the temperature change. For example, when a steel rod having a length L and diameter D is subjected to a tensile force, L increase and D is decrease. When, when we have a, a longitudinal bar and we apply the load, a tensile load on either side, it will uh, happen that the diameter of the a bar will be decreased and the length of the bar will be increased. Diameter, diameter decrease and length will be increased. You can see in this picture. Now, when we talk about strain, strain is a dimensionless quantity used to account for the deformation in a body subjected to either a force or temperature. The strain is a reason uh, like when we apply the load on anybody, if there is a uh, change, that change is known as strain in the body. We have two types of strain, normal stress, strain and shear strain. What is normal strain? The elongation or contraction of a line segment per unit length of the length is referred to a normal strain. Suppose we have a undeformed body. This is a uh, segment AB. So when there is a change in the length, suppose initially the length or uh, length is delta S. This is a original or initial length. When uh, there is a change in the shape, the, uh, the length will be delta S dash. It is a represent representation of the length only. Delta S is the initial length and delta S dash is a change length. So the uh, normal strain will be represented by change in length. What is mean by change in length? Final length minus initial length. Change in length over original length is known as a strain in the body. At any point A, at any point it is represented by, uh, the strain is represented by limit, limit from B to A along N. Strain. If we talk about shear strain, the change in the angle that occur between two line segments. Initially, we talk about one line segment. This is a one line segment. If we talk about two line segment, this is a line segment. Now, when we talk about bi line segment or two line segment that were originally perpendicular to one another is referred to as a shear strain. See, there is a uh, two line segments A, B, A, C and they are perpendicular to each other. Pi by 2 is a representation of uh, perpendicular body. This is an undeformed shape. After deformation, the, uh, the shape of the body is changed and it will be like this. So this is a deformed body. So shear strain is represented by the following formula. Now, effect of normal and shear strain. Normal strain cause a change in the volume of a body. Like due to normal strain, the change occur in the volume of the body. Shear strain cause a change in the shape of the body. Okay. Now, unit of normal and shear strains. This is a very important thing for me that you, you have to know the unit of any uh, quantity of or any object. Like suppose... What is the unit of stress? What is the unit of strain? It contributes a lot. Okay, now normal strain. The normal strain 
are expressed as millimeter meter per meter millimeter per meter inch per inch etc what does it means that uh, uh, there is no like uh, there is no unit for a strain or you can represent by because if you see in this one in this one you can see that this contain unit in meter and this one is meter as well so meter over meter will be cancel out the effect so this is we can say that a strain has no unit or both the unit in the in the in terms of length meter per meter millimeter per millimeter inch per inch etc this is a representation of a unit start from example number 1 uh, the rigid beam is uh, supported by a pin at a and wire bd and ce uh, if the distributed load causes the and c to be displaced 10 mm downward determine the normal strain developed in wire ce and bd so you can see here there is a pin support at a and there is a beam which is subjected a uh, uniform distributed load here okay and this is the uh, wire bd and ce now they are saying that if there is any uh, uh, elongation or displacement uh, at point C, you can see if the distributed load causes the end C to be displaced 10 mm downward, when this point we have a deflection of 10 mm, determine the normal strain developed in the wire CE and BD. What are the displacement in this wire CE and BD? So for this, we have to make a free body diagram, diagram first. Okay. So what we have, we have a, a member that is the length of the member is total length is uh, 5 mm. Okay. So here uh, we have support A. This is our support A. Okay. This is our support B. And that is our support C. Okay. This is sorry, uh, not support. Support is at A. We have support at A. B and D is a wire. And here B and uh, sorry, C and E is a wire. Okay. The length of this wire is 2000. And the length of this wire is 1500. Okay. So in this one, there is a deflection at point C, which is 10 mm. The deflection at point C is 10 mm. So here we have a support. So the deflection will be like this. So there is certain deflection at point B, which is represented by delta B. So delta C is 10 mm. So there is delta B as, as well. So by using the concept of two triangle, so we have one big triangle here, this one. This is a one big triangle and this is a one small triangle. By using the concept of two triangle, we can say that we have 10 over 5, which is 10 over 5. 5 is, this length is 2 meter this length is 3 meter so the total length is 5 meter so we can say that 2 meter plus 3 meter equals to 5 meter so 10 over 5 here 10 over 5 is equals to is equals to delta b over 2 see delta b over 2 that is delta b and that length of this wire Okay, or the length of this span, 2 meter. So, by using this uh, method, we can determine delta B. So, delta B will be equals to 10 times 2 divided by 5. 5 1 5, 5 2 the, and it is 4. So, delta B will be 4 mm. Delta B will be 4 mm. Now, what we have to do? We have to determine the elongation in wire DB 
एंड सीई सो एलोंगेशन एलोंगेशन एट वायर बी डी इज इक्व टू डेल्टा बी डिवाइडेड बाय लेंथ ऑफ बी डी सो इट विल बी फोर डिवाइडेड बाय फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड दैट इज फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड ओके Similarly, elongation at point C E is equals to delta C over length of C E, which is ten, which is given ten mm divided by two thousand. So by calculating, we get the answers. For delta B D. it will be 0 0.0267 mm okay sorry for that okay and for delta ce it will be 0.005 mm okay so this is the value of elongation at wire wire bd and this is wire c e so this is the elongation in wires uh, bc or bd and c e example number 2 in the example number 2 we have a problem in which we have a part of a control linkage for an airplane consists of a rigid member c b d This is a rigid member C B D, and a flexible cable A B. There is a cap flexible flexible cable A B. If a force is applied to the point end at D, here we have a, a rigid member C B D, and flexible uh, flexible cable A B. If the force is applied at point d of the member which cause rotation of uh, theta point 3 determine the normal strain in the cable originally the cable is unstretched so this is a problem in which we have to determine the uh, normal strain in the cable okay so now you can see in this figure uh we have a wire ab and uh, wire uh, ab is attached with uh, with the rigid member cbd at point b so the length of ab is unknown right now so by using the uh, law of pythagoras we can determine the length of ab which is uh, base square plus perpendicular square is equals to hypotenuse square so here we have the base of 400 mm and uh, hypotenuse is uh, ab and uh, perpendicular is 300 so 400 square plus 300 square is equals to 500 500 mm uh, mm is the length of member ab now here you can see that uh, member ab like uh, mem member uh, rigid member cbd is uh, due to this point load due to this point load this one it is deflected somehow So this is a deflection deformation. This is a deformation part, okay. And this is the angle given, and the 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 angle is here point three. So actual angle is ninety. So the new angle will be adding by adding this one ninety plus point three will be ninety point three degree, okay. by using the concept of same pythagoras but we have to have right now we have our uh, our b dash suppose this is point b so the point will be here it will be b dash the point will be b dash here so the length of member a b dash will be changed so it will be a b dash is equals to 400 square which is the length of base plus 300 square which is the height of uh, perpendicular minus 2 times 400 or you can say that 2ab cos theta and theta will be 90.3 
So we get the new length of member AB dash is equals to 501.225 mm. So by putting in the formula AB dash minus AB, which is you can say initial uh, final length minus initial length divided by initial length. You can get the form, uh, you can put the value, you get the answer, which is elongation at member AB will be 0 0.00251 millimeter per millimeter. This is the answer. In this problem, uh, uh, first read the problem. The piece of rubber is originally rectangle. It's okay. There is a piece of rubber. You can see that this piece of rubber, which is represented in blue color, which is blue in uh, color. Sorry. We have to uh, do example number three first. Sorry. Uh, the material distorted into the dash position shown. There is a material which is A, C, D, F. This is a material which is distorted in the dash position. You can see that here it is distorted at the dash position. Now determine the average normal strain that occur along the diagonal AD and CF. Along diagonal AD and CF. We have to determine the normal strain at this point. So here is a free body diagram and you can see that in this picture, this is the initial point A. Okay. This is the initial point A. This is point F. This is point C. And this is point D. It is deflected to this point. The new point will be C dash. And the deflection is 15 mm. Their deflection is D dash and the deflection uh, value is 25 mm. Okay. And it is fixed with A and F and the length of member AC is 100. So similarly, it is a rectangle. So DF is 100 as well. So basically, CF is equals to DF is equals to 100 mm and CD is equals to AF is equals to ATM. You can see that this point is C dash. The distance between C and C dash is 15 and D and D dash is 25 mm. And at A, there is no deflection. A and F, there is no deflection or there is no deformation. So A we have to determine the normal strain at point A and D, diagonal AD and diagonal C, F. Okay. Not C, um, like not C dash F. We have to determine the normal strain at CF and AD. Okay. Now, the undeformed length of the diagonal AD and CF are undeformed length of diagonal AD and CFR, it will be its base and its perpendicular. Okay, for the length AD, AD is a hypotenuse. Uh, if we make, a, make this triangle out here, so AD, you can see that this is point D, this is point A. So what is the length from A to F? It's 80. And what is the length from F to D? This is F point, no? What is the length here? 100. So this is base. This is perpendicular. If we put the Pythagoras theorem, that base square plus perpendicular square is equal to hypotenuse square. I write it for you. Hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square. Is it okay? So for the hypotenuse, we have uh, for the perpendicular we have 100 and for the base we have 80. So 80 square plus 100 square is equals to a length of AD or length of CF. They are same. Okay. Because this is rectangular body. So it will be 80 square plus 100 square is equals to 16400 mm. 
okay now the deform length of diagonal a d dash and c d c dash f the deform length of a d dash and c, c dash f will be changed now we consider this triangle this this triangle this okay if we make this triangle uh, let let me erase this one uh, Now we will talk about the another triangle which is AD dash. Okay, we have to we don't have a space to write, that's why I'm just rubbing them. Okay. Now here you can see now we have to we have to consider this triangle, the dotted one. So this is A and F is firm. A and F, sorry, F and d dash this is d dash okay now the length of this one 80 the length uh, of df is remains same 100 but it is deflected in the direction of horizontal direction it is deflected to 80 plus 25 so the length of this one, this one, sorry, it will be 80 plus 25. This length, huh? Before it was 80. So the length of AF will be, sorry, AD will be 80 plus 25. So the total length of AD dash will be 80 plus 25 square plus 100 square is equal to 21025 mm. Now, when we talk about CF, let me rub this one. Now, when we talk about members CF, in this CF, we have this line or we consider this triangle in this way this is c dash this is f and this is a now length of c dash f will be represented represented by 80 minus this 15 this 15 80 minus this 15 plus 100 square is a height okay or uh, you can say perpendicular so the length of c dash f will be 1420 uh, uh, 14225 mm okay so length of ad will be initial length minus final length minus initial length divided by initial length so final length will be 21025 which is lad dash minus lad divided by led so that elongation in the diagonal ad will be 0.1232 millimeter per millimeter and for the length uh, for the member lc dash f minus lcf the uh, elongation at member cf will be 0.6 okay so uh, example number four the piece of a rubber is originally rectangle Determine the average shear strain uh, sigma xy at A if the corner BD are subjected to displacements that causes the rubber to distort as shown in the dashed line. You can see in this figure, in this figure, this is point A, which is fixed, and we have to determine uh, sigma xy at point A. So sigma xy means uh, sigma in the direction of x and sigma in the direction of y because it's a in uh, it's a shear stress shear, shear strain so it is in a multiple uh, two line it's not in a single line if it is in a single line it's a normal strain when we talk about shear strain it is a in a two line segments so we have a two line segment which is a d 
and a b so from the direction in the direction x a b is deflected at a length of 2 millimeter and along in the direction of y that d is deflected slightly that is which is 3 mm so we use the formula c this one is theta 1 which is in the direction of x which is equals to 10 theta 1 is equals to 2 divided by 300. The answer will be 0 0.00667 radian. Do not make it 10 inverse or something. Just 2 divided by 300 will be 0 0.0667. And in the direction of y, 4 or 3 divided by 400 will give you the same answer. Okay, so both in radian, so we can determine sigma in the direction of x, y by adding theta 1 plus theta 2. So, the, which is 0 0.00667 plus 0 0.0075 will give you 0 0.042 radian. That is strain or shear strain in the direction of x, y at point A. Example number 5. The piece of plastic is originally rectangle. Number one, determine the average normal strain that occur along the diagonal AC and DB. Number two, determine the shear strain at, at D. So you can see that we have two things to be determined in this, in this problem. In number one, we have to determine normal strain, which is in a line segment, which is in the one direction, which is AC and DB. So, A, C and D, B and determine the shear strain at D. So, when we talk about shear strain at D, so we will talk about in both the direction in two line segments, which is X and Y. Okay. Start. Here, the free body diagram in which you can see that uh, the D point is fixed and A will be deflected to A dash which is uh, the length is 2 mm B B dash C C dash and the length uh, the respective lengths are given for A point when it deflect to uh, in the direction of X it is 3 mm when it, it's deflect in the direction of Y it is 2 mm here here you can see it is in the direction of X it is 2 3 mm it is in direction of Y 2 mm same in B dash because B dash is a new point which is move in the direction of Y5 and in the direction of X4. So it's a new point which is called as B dash. And here we have a new point which is C dash which is both 2 mm in the direction of X and Y. Now the length of AC, the length of AC and BD initially are same because it's a rectangular body and the diagonals are same. So AC is equals to BD is equals to 400 square plus 300 square is equals to 500 mm by using the law of Pythagoras. Now DB dash DB dash. This is D. This is B dash. The length of DB dash will be is equals to in the direction of X 400 plus 5 405 square and the direction of y it is 300 plus 4 so 304 square is equals to 506.4 mm now a dash c dash a dash c dash now what is a dash where is a dash a is here a dash is here so in the direction of x in the direction of x how much is the uh, how much is the a dash? So in the direction of a dash c dash, this is four zero one. How do we can uh, we calculate this one? So th the initial length is you can see here it is four hundred. So which is four hundred? Okay. Plus this length three. Minus 2 this length. 
So it will be 401. But in the direction of y, which is 300 plus 2 and minus 2. So it will be 300. So this is in the direction of y, it is in, it is in the direction of x. This is 401 square plus 300 square is equal to a dash c dash. Okay. Now, average normal strain at point AC and DB. AC and DB will be change uh, final length minus initial length divided by initial length. So, 508, 500.8 minus 500 divided by 500 will give you elongation or a strain in the direction of AC. And 506.4 minus 500 divided by 500 will give you the strain in the direction of DB. So this is the normal strain in a line segment for the member AC and DB. For the member, diagonal member AC and DB. Now we have to determine shear strain at point D along X and Y. Now theta 1 is equal to, we have to make a sum of theta 1 plus theta 2. So theta 1 is equal to 10, 2 divided by 302. Divide and theta 2 is equal to 10, 2 divided by 403. It will give you the answer. And then you put these values in them and you get the answer in that in terms of radian, which is shear strain at point D and along with the direction of X and Y. Okay. Basically, how we calculate these uh, 302 and 403, this is 2, which is this one. Okay. This is 2, this one. And this is 2, this one. But when we have a member length, which is in the along with the direction of A, uh, D, A, D will be increased. So this is 400 plus 3. It will be 403 and this is 300 plus 2 is equal to 302. So this is uh, how they determine the values and then put it. So guys, uh, this is for uh, this is the end of lecture number 5 and uh, I hope it is clear and uh, see you inshallah in the next lecture. Assalamu alaikum.